There's a remarkable thing in just about every Dutch city, areas that are almost completely devoid of cars, and it's amazing. Walking around these areas is remarkable, it's so lively, yet peaceful. You'll see people of all ages, children, seniors, families, everyone. This is the Dutch concept of Autoloo. It's important to note here what Autoloo is not. It does not mean car-free. There's a different word for car-free in Dutch, Autofrei, and despite what Google Translate might like to tell you, they're not the same thing. Some people translate Autoloo as low car or car light, but that's not quite right. David Hembro, who writes the excellent blog A View from the Cycle Path, translates it as nearly car-free, which is probably the most accurate you're going to get. I'll put a link to David's video and blog in the description. Autoloo areas are incredible, so it's crazy to me how, whenever an Autoloo concept is proposed, in, in just about any city, there's a sudden irrational anger that it generates in people. You'll see claims that shops will go under, nobody will get anything delivered by truck ever again, people with reduced mobility will be left to rot in their houses, and buildings will burn to the ground because fire trucks can never get through. Or maybe you'll hear that it's part of some evil leftist agenda. This reaction isn't limited just to where you live, it happens everywhere. A few years ago I saw it myself when Toronto created a pilot project to limit through traffic to cars on King Street in order to speed up the streetcars. A pilot that was successful and became permanent earlier this year. When Copenhagen proposed to pedestrianize this street, uh, how is that pronounced? The, you gotta be kidding me, Danish. The Stroll in 1962, the mayor received so many death threats that he had to travel with bodyguards. The st uh, Danish street was a huge success, inspiring several others in the city. Shops on Copenhagen's pedestrian streets do great business, despite the cold and snowy Danish winters. And it happened in the Netherlands, too. When the famous Groningen traffic circulation plan was proposed in the 1970s, that's the plan that ultimately turned this into this, and this into this, shopkeepers staged protests and the politician driving the project required police protection because of threats of violence. Today, nobody would propose bringing the cars back. The shops are thriving and Groningen has the cleanest air of any major city in the country. Thankfully nowadays, most people in the Netherlands have become comfortable with the idea of Autoloo, and even expect it, at least in city centres. Once people experience the reality, they discover that the fear-mongering is untrue, in fact, it's literally the opposite. It's easier to get around the city, because the streets aren't clogged with cars. The area has become more accessible. People who can't drive, such as seniors, children, or really anyone else who would be dependent on others to shuttle them around, can now travel independently, without fear of being run over by motor vehicles. Small businesses, who are usually the first to resist, tend to do quite well. I mean, unless you're an auto garage or something. This makes sense, because what small retail businesses really need the most is not parking, it's foot traffic, and people prefer walking in an outaloo area rather than along the side of a busy road. The most remarkable thing of all is that people who absolutely do need to drive also find it easier. With the majority of car traffic removed, it becomes quicker for residents, delivery vehicles, handicapped vehicles, and emergency vehicles to make it to their destinations. So Autoloo places can have cars, but that access is heavily restricted to benefit other modes of travel. A good example of this is the Franz Hals neighborhood in Amsterdam. All cars are permitted in this area, though only through certain routes. Very limited street parking is available, mostly for deliveries. The majority of the former surface car parking spots have been converted into gardens, playgrounds, and bicycle parking. Autoloo doesn't work everywhere, of course, and certain elements need to be in place for it to be successful. North American attempts are almost always unsuccessful because they're still built with a car-first mindset. If you assume that people are going to drive to your pedestrian street, you've already failed. Autoloo works best when you have a lot of people who are already in the area. Places with a mixed use, providing shops, and houses, and offices, all within walking distance of each other. You'll find Autoloo in just about every city and town in the Netherlands, certainly in the city centres, but also in suburbs, like this one in Lent, a suburb of Nijmegen, or this one in Veenendaal West. Autoloo is most easily applied to old neighbourhoods 
those built before the car, but there's nothing stopping the concept from being used in new developments, and Amsterdam's Zaudas is an excellent example of this. Centered around a major train station, Zaudas is the financial district for Amsterdam. There are offices, shops, restaurants, cafes, and condo buildings all in one area. This would, in no way, be improved by allowing access to cars. Amsterdam wants to expand this concept significantly with the Agenda Amsterdam Autolu, a plan to make large parts of Amsterdam nearly car-free. There are a lot of very interesting elements to this plan, but I'll talk about that in more detail in a future video. Autolu is responsible for some of the greatest urban environments I've ever visited, so I'm really glad to see Amsterdam's plans for the future. And hopefully, other cities will follow the same trend where possible. But I'd recommend, you know, maybe skipping the whole death threats from shopkeepers part.